But now what we're really here for is today's star, and that is Scott Phillips. He's the operations officer at the Massel Museum, and that means he does all the record keeping for membership and capital campaign and your donations and He's just, uh, he does, oh, he does room rentals, and he does a thousand, thousand jobs around the Maslin Museum, but that's not why he's here today. Today he's here to talk to you as Scott Phillips, the artist, and uh, I think I'm probably his greatest fan as an artist, um, his most ardent fan. He has a, Kent, a, a, a BA degree from Kent State University in art history and a minor in fine arts, and um, he's very modest about the shows that he has his work in. I know I've been to the openings of shows in Cleveland and Akron and Canton, and I know he's had lots of other shows that he fails to mention to us until it's too late. So he's a little uh, modest on that, that uh, realm. But, and when I say I'm an ardent fan, I, I counted, I have 12 works of Scott's, 12 pieces of artwork in my home, so I love his work and one he's going to tell you about, but it is a mural in my dining room, <laughs> and uh, it's just my favorite work of art. Um, he helps me feel more bonded to him in his fabulous artwork because he let me help on the Lillian Gish mural and the Tommy Henrik mural. He let me paint inside the lines. <laughs> No creativity, absolutely. But he did, on my own mural at home, let me paint the last dot on the mural. So this is my dear friend, Scott Phillips, here to tell you about his beautiful Maslin murals. Okay, let me grab this thing here. Thank you so much for everybody for being here. I really appreciate uh, the turnout. Um, I also really appreciate having a career where, you know, I can work at that, work at the Maslin Museum, have fun, you know, nine to five, and then I actually spend all of my outside time doing projects like this. So I just really appreciate that and want to, you know, put a thank you out to the community for that. Um, so let's get started. I um, kind of have a long presentation, so I'm going to move through these. I'm going to show a lot of photographs of projects that I um, have done. So at the end, if anybody has any questions, just, you know, obviously please let us know. Um, I did want to kind of highlight um, some of the other murals that you'll see in town um, if you're not already familiar. Um, you know, we have the Eric Groe murals, the Center of Heroes, that's Caddy Corner to the Museum, um, Ohio and Erie Canal mural, um, the 55 Diamond Court, um, there's also the Valor mural that was done by uh, Larry and Monica Zink, um, and then some of the murals that I'm obviously going to cover today that I've done. Um, so then I kind of threw some photos in there. So that's the Ohio and Erie Canal mural. Uh, we have the Sensor Century of Heroes. Like I said, that's the one that's catty corner from the museum. That's the one that I tend to park my car under when I you know, walk across the street to my 9 to 5. <laughs> um, 55 Diamond Court. And then there's the Valor mural. Um, so this is just kind of give you a reference point. Um, this is artwork that I was doing in 2008, 2009. So it's kind of angsty, you know, as a young person. Um, so kind of, you know, grody colors. Um, really how my process came about, and it was funny that, you know, I hadn't really men mentioned this in other presentations I've given on this. I talked to Brandon before this, and he was like, you know, why did you paint halftone so big? Um, my mode of painting is in halftone, and I'm going to explain that in a second, but um, if you know anything about screen printing, and halftone is usually screen printed on, you know, a flat surface. Well, I wanted to somehow get that look on objects that weren't exactly flat. So if you can see, this kind of bumpy old piece of wood that's stapled together, you're not going to be able to paint, you know, screen print on that. It's not flat. So I did this by hand, 2008, 2009. Um, this is another one that I did in 2008, 2009, uh, uh, Betty Davis. So um, I was definitely attracted automatically to portraiture. Um, so all those little dots, you know, you can see all that. This is all hand painted. This is about that big or so. So I started, you know, it was a weird thing that I was like, wow, I really like what screen printing looks like, but I'm really, really interested in doing things by hand and that labor that's involved with that. So I started painting in halftone. Now, bear with me, because I'd like to read this. Um, 
just so you kind of get an idea of scientifically what this is, a uh, reprogra uh, reprographic technique that simulates continuous tone imagery through the use of dots, varying either in size or spacing, thus generating a gra gradient-like effect. Halftone can also be used to refer specifically to the image that is produced by this process. So that's the first paragraph that I want to go over. Really what this is saying is, is I paint a bunch of little dots, and depending on how big or small these little dots are and how close together they are, it gives the illusion of grayscale. So it's all about the perception of how far, how close you are to something. So you can see down here in the corner, that's real dark. Down he up here is real light, and it's all in black. So there's no grays involved. So um, what I like to do then is, um, obviously I'm painting in this halftone, uh, and I'm really trying to say that I want to take the process that's normally mechanical, screen printing, you know, you kind of take the artist's hand out of it, and I put my hand in it, so I actually, you know, I'm replacing that with actual labor, and I, I'm i into taking a lot of time to do something that there's probably an easier way to do it. I know it's kind of complicated, but that's just kind of where my brain is, a little bit OCD with that sort of thing. Um, so this is one of the projects where I started to get a little bit bigger. This is about five foot by eight foot. I did this in Akron. So this was right before I actually had ever done a mural before. But as you can see, you know, you can see all that half tone. So this is all hand painted. Uh, so I went through in every little dot. Um, I worked in a great, uh, you know, a square pattern, you know, kind of marked it off, knew exactly where things were. And I just kind of went through, um, painted all of those. Um, so I was, I, I was gradually working larger and larger, and I was like, oh man, I, I don't think I can, you know, really do this any bigger. Um, it it lent itself well to smaller pieces working in that way. Um, but then I was approached, and this is the first big project that I'll talk about. Um, my friend Billy Cribbs, a uh, Maslin artist, he was approached by the previous administration, uh, previous mayor, um, for a project to paint the pump stations. Um, and he was like, oh man, I'm really busy. I got all these commissions. I don't really want to do it. Um, so he was like, can you please do it? The city keeps asking me. I don't really feel like I have the time to do it. And I was like, oh, I never really thought about a project like that before. You know, working with the city, it's going to be, you know, just a lot of things to deal with. I was really, really nervous about that. Um, but I, I decided to take it on. Um, so this is the pump station, the Lillian Gist pump station unpainted. Here's another view of it. This would be if you're going north on 21. And then here is the other pump station that's now the Paul Brown and the Tiger pump station. Um, so my inspiration, you know, it was Lillian Gish. Um, so I wanted to take uh, something from the Scarlet Letter. So this is the original idea that I gave city council um, of the mural. So this isn't painted. This is what I actually photoshopped. So all of these designs that I do, I photoshopped them first. And then I actually, you know, redo them up on the walls, um, you know, block by block um, to get the scaling correct. So you can see this is a picture of my dad. My dad actually helped me out a lot because keep in mind, I'm, uh, I work full time at the museum, so I can use all the help I can get. Um, but as you can see now, too, all of these little dots, all hand painted. Um, so I put the layers down first and then the black on top of that. Here's me wearing warm clothes. And this was 2011. So this is obviously the very first major project that I had. But see, there again, you can see that. So through those dots, all painted in one color, all those little dots, depending on how close they are or far away from each other, once you get at a distance, that just looks like a photograph. So it tricks your eye into thinking that, you know, there isn't just dots there. That's actually... Um, you know, photograph. So I did the same thing. Now you can see, you know, this this is my initial mural project that I was doing, so still kind of working it out. The half tone in Paul Brown is very big, which means the bigger the dots, the less time it takes. So I was really working on how much time and energy I spend on things. And as you see these projects progress, you'll see these dots get smaller and smaller and smaller. So then this is completed. So this is the actual product. Um, so as you can tell, then, when you see that, it just looks like a photograph. Um, and I probably don't have to tell you that it takes hundreds of hours to paint things like this. Um, 
you know, it does call in question sometimes my, my method, but um, I, I believe that I found a style that um, maybe people are just not crazy enough to do, and I'm the crazy person that wants to do it. So uh, here's, a, here's an up-close view uh, where you can actually see some of that halftone. So it's kind of cool when you see it up close that it looks like this, but then when you see it far away, it looks like a photograph. There's the tiger. So there, there you can kind of see all that detail then. And then there's me proud standing in front of it <laughs> after all those hours. So after that, I was like, wow, this turned out really good. It took a lot of time. I'm really exhausted, but I think I should probably try to do this. I mean, I really enjoyed it. Um, I never thought. It's one of those things that in your life, sometimes you're bumped in a direction and you never thought that that's what you were going to do with your life. Um, honestly, I started at the Madison Museum as an intern um, interested in art history and fine art, and I never thought that I'd be a development officer, that I would be, you know, asking for money, and, you know, who wants to ask for money? Um, but sometimes, you know, you, you, you pick up those responsibilities, and you really start to enjoy those, and I believe that that's the exact same thing that happened with this. So I started my own company. I was like, I'm just going to do this. I work full-time, but I'm going to work 90 hours a week. Um, and as Margie mentioned, this is her dining room. So Victoria Woodhall. So I was really, really excited to do this in our dining room. Really excited, too, because I think it turned out so well with just the color of the wood. We used kind of a metallic paint. Um, so I think it's amazing. Um, so as this goes along, I'm going to kind of speed up some. Um, a lot of these will have a lot more pictures. Um, this is a sifting machine that I did for Midwestern Industries in Maslin in 2012. Um, so this is the actual painted finalized version. It looks like it's photoshopped, but it's not. That's a machine that they pour gravel into, and then it sifts it to different sizes. So not a very exciting thing, but it's cool looking now, I guess. <laughs> and a uh, funny story, they sent this to Canada. Um, so this is, in a, this is the trade show where they sold it to the Canadian company. Um, and the, the caveat was like, hey, you know, this is our, our floor model, you'll get it for cheaper, and we'll also repaint it for you, but they didn't want it repainted. They were like, oh, keep it how it is, it's really cool, so I was really proud of that. Um, there's another shot of it, so. Um, and then I started picking up little projects here and there, did this on the back of Benders, um, and then Tommy Henrik. The Elam, Elams approached me, um, because, you know, their business is right across the street from the pump station. And they said, oh, we always see it. We really, really like it. Would you ever consider doing the wall at the Elam Music Company? Um, and that was in 2012, and this was the wall. Uh, and I was like, whoa, that wall is really big. <laughs> um, 18 feet high by 53 feet wide. So you can see that is a cargo van. So very big. Um, so I was intimidated, to say the least. But... I was passionate about it. I really enjoy this. Um, so I agreed to it. Um, and that was the design that I gave them. Uh, we worked through, thank you. <laughs> we worked through a bunch of different layouts. Um, I know that there was that famous, and I, I apologize because I'm not exactly familiar with the famous play where I believe he bunted and then like he ran to first base. And uh, But uh, we, were, we were really trying to work out exactly what we thought worked well, and we wanted something that would be viewed from 21 that would look really kind of iconic. Um, so we came up with, you know, obviously him here, and then that's the stadium behind him. And if you notice, that's very, very tight halftone and very loose halftone. So I began to start playing with those layers and how big I actually make those dots when I actually layer them. Um, so this is when we started. Um, so I laid everything out, put down the the undercoating, and now you can see these are all the tiny little dots I'm drawing on the wall. They actually skim-coated this wall so that I could actually draw on it so it wasn't bit brick. Um, there's my dad again helping me. He used to show up right after work. It's awesome. Um, short curl paint. So it's super, super high-grade industrial coating paint. It's what they use on the bottoms of boats. So it definitely made to uh, you know, stand up to the elements. So here you can see the actual process. So all of these are, I Photoshop those. So I'll take a Wacom pen, and that's like a technology that I can actually take a little pen, and I draw, and then it pops up on the computer. I'm actually drawing on the computer screen with like a, you know, it's like a little pencil. 
Um, so I literally lay this out in Photoshop, draw all those, and then I get this printed large scale and then draw them again. And then after they're drawn on the wall, then I paint them all. So very involved. There I'm, I'm not taking a nap, I promise. So um, then I'm going to kind of rifle some of the, through some of these photos. Here's me drawing some more dots. There you can see it progressing. You can see the size of those dots compared to the scale. There's Erin, my, one of my assistants. She's been amazing, too. Her schedule is like the exact opposite of mine, so it's great. So when I'm 9 to 5 and she can be there, then she takes off for work, and then you know I work you know in the evenings a lot of times. There's me pulling another late night. I'm actually driving this out, not driving it into the parking lot. So this is when I'm starting. <laughs> So it's slowly, slowly coming together. Uh, this was a fun fact. This is completely crooked right here, so the safest way that I could figure out to make this lift go all the way up was to put a big board under it. So not OSHA approved. <laughs> it was really hot the summer of 2012, too. I don't know if anybody remembers. That was the summer we had like 104 degree temperatures. Yeah, I'm wearing long sleeves and 104 degree temperature, hiding behind my lift. And I also always get in trouble with my wife because I wear my dress clothes right after work and I paint in them. So. <laughs> so you can see this is really coming together. This is all finished on this side. So you can see what it does then once you know you get that half tone down. I mean, it's like a photograph. Slowly closer, closer. You can see all the dots that Aaron's painting. And it's cool too because I'm going to go back to this one. I, I really have a fond... Um, uh, I really, really appreciate old sign painting, too, and I'm really getting into that as well. So, so all this, you know, was all hand-drawn as well. It's just I'm, I'm really kind of getting into that. Um, so getting closer and closer. Oh, my gosh, there's Shane. Shane Jackson. <laughs> so almost complete. Yep, and there, there's the complete version of it. Um, at least I thought it was complete. Then this happened about a week later. I don't know if anybody knows about this, but um, it was actually supposed to have a clear coating, and the contractor put on a white coating. So it had to be power washed off. So um, this is what happened then afterwards. So needless to say, I felt like I you know, lost a puppy. I was very beside myself. So they had to carve out all of the sections that were damaged by the power washing. So it all had to be patched. And then I repainted it. And that's the paint that's the picture after it was painted. So so it took about it, it was completed then the second time in 2013. So so now it's good to go, repainted and everything, but but yeah, man, that was a that was one heck of a project. So th here's us uh, celebrating after it was all done. <laughs> Cool. So then I started picking up more projects, like I said, in between. Did the Cosmos Grill sign. I think this was 2013. Um, and then Audrey, too, I did a mural in Art Bomb Tattoo in 2013 as well. Uh, so I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with uh, Little Shop of Horrors, the big plant monster thing that's in that. Um, and then, I don't know if, this is Photoshop, so this is what I did paint. There's no picture of it painted. Um, I've been trying to find one. Uh, the Village Idiots bus um, that caught on fire. Yes, yeah, so no one got a picture before. I think it was like they took it up the weekend after I painted it and it caught on fire. Um, and there was the joke that I used flammable paint. But <laughs> um, So then uh, I actually got commissioned again by Midwestern Industries to do a second sifting machine. Uh, this one, though, because of the machine, it had... Parts on the other side, we could only paint one side, so they wanted the logo side. So I did one of those again, which was really awesome because um, this one went to Las Vegas. Um, so they were kind of traveling all around. Uh, I had to use this crazy paint that was food safe because this one didn't do gravel. This was actually for, for salt or sugar or something, um, which was kind of interesting. Um, so then I did a, a mural of a photograph, uh, Dory Heck's mother. Um, I think it was her grandmother, actually. Um, so this is actually an interior mural, which mural was awesome because I didn't have to worry about the elements, which was definitely a big thing with a lot of the other projects I had done. 
but as you can see, the same thing. She wanted the dots a lot bigger, though, so it looked a little bit more abstract. So we kind of played around with how with the sizing on that. Um, but I really like that one because if you walk down, that's right on Lincoln Way. If you walk down the street, you can peek in the windows and see it. Uh, so then I did another little project. This is for Crown Cork and Seal. It's actually where my dad works. Um, so they had a sign that was there for like years and years and years. And, and he suggested to him, he's like, oh, my son does murals in Maslin. You should have him do, do your sign. And, and I did, and it was pretty cool. They, they liked it. Um, I also did a, a backdrop for uh, Mask of the Red Death for the Akron Civic Theater. They have a Halloween party every year. So another little project I did. Um, so now Joe, Joe Walsh. And let me check how I'm doing on time. It's actually doing perfect. Um, Joe Walsh was another big project that I got commissioned for. Um, Mike Feeder, he owns the Water Street Tavern up in Cav. Um, he has a historic building, so the idea was to put something right here up on the second floor of this building. Um, but it was my first, I guess what made me nervous at first was the ground under here. Um, it is an alley that like drops like 10 foot um, in like probably the span of five feet. So um, putting the structure here was really, really precarious. Um, so this is the image we came up with for the design. Um, so as you can see, once again, I really am into those kind of gray tones. Um, the half tone obviously is only painted in black and white. Um, here's then when we put up the scaffolding. I should have got a really good picture of that alleyway. I keep talking about that, but believe me, it was kind of crazy. Um, so. You can see this has all been skim coated right here. Um, and then I'm beginning on the eyes up here. This was up about, what was that, like 20 feet? I'm so bad at measuring by, by sight. So <laughs> you'd think I'd be good at it by now. So here's his face. So you can see the size of the dots on his face. And here's actually drawing it out. And like I said, all these are drawn in Photoshop first. And then I print them out and draw them by hand again. And you can see how small they're starting to get. And it's really, really kind of hard to tell from a distance, but all this little drawing in here. Um, and if you see a bunch of these X's, my secret way of telling myself what's black is just to draw an X on it. So I have to always make sure right before I paint that whatever you know kind of section that's drawn and enclosed doesn't have an X, or it has an X inside of it if I'm you know painting in black. There's Aaron again. And you can see how small these are now. So those are much smaller. Tommy, Tommy Henrix are about this big. These are about this big. So there's her goofing around up on the left, or on the scaffold. She drew a smiley face. There's me in front of it, <laughs> super exhausted. You can kind of see, there you go. There's a car parked there. See, you can kind of, kind of see it, kind of goes down at an angle. So here we are a little bit further in the project. There I am painting out some, some letters. It kind of gives you a scale, then you see me, and then you can see those dots now. And I'm scared of heights. I probably should have mentioned that. <laughs> like, actually, like, really scared of heights. I, so I, I always have my harness on. So. And I made Aaron do it, too, so got to be safe. So here we are getting a little bit further. This is July of 2016, or 16, yeah. Um, so it was definitely warm when we were doing it. Um, and it was funny because um, we wanted to have this done before they have a 4th of July kind of festival in Kent that weekend. Um, so it was one of those things that we were working on it for about a week or two. Because um, most of the time these projects take you know months to, to pull off. We were working for a week or two and the building owner was like, oh man, it would be really great if we could get this done by the festival for you know July 4th weekend. And it was like a week. So we stayed out there for like, I think I, I think I, some vacation days are called off. I'm not sure Alex is here. She might know. Um, but yeah, we worked furiously for like 12 hours a day for like three or four days. Um, so here you can see again, here's my friend Andy's painting. Um, so you can see how just crazy small these dots are. And one thing too is this paint, like I said, it's this high, you know, high content because this black, I can paint it on one coat. What other paint do you know that you can paint black in one coat? It's crazy. It's so thick, it's like tar. So imagine two painting this, trying to keep this accurate and painting with like a bucket of tar. It's, it's kind of insane. Um, so this is when it was finished then. 
and then the day that they took down the scaffolding, and then there it is. So I was very proud with proud proud with it. Um, it's it's crazy though too. I get a lot of comments that it, it looks like a vinyl banner that was put up on the wall, and I'm kind of proud of that though. But it was because it's so the the paint is so high gloss um, that you know it does kind of looks like it was just printed up. And there's a shot of it. You know, oh there there we go. There's the alley. Maybe not as crazy as I made it sound, but. When you're up on a lift and you're scared of heights, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> but cool. And there's a, that's the festival that they had, so everyone is happy because hey, it's done. So and it does. It looks like it's Photoshop, but it's. I promise you, it's not. So it's such a dark black color that it just renders as, as you know, so so uh, you know, opaque. So then at this time, this is what I'm how I'm working then with my painting. So this would be about 2016. So once again, this is probably. 32 by 26 or 32 by 20 something. Um, so once again, I'm hand painting all these dots. This is a historic photograph that I found of a bunch of guys hanging out in front of a pharmacy. Um, there's some guys with handkerchiefs on their face, kind of look like gang members. So, But these are the paintings that I'm doing at the same time I'm doing this project. So there's another one. So you can see that play with those dots. And I like the idea that it's like, you can't even see who that guy is. Kind of looks like he's giving you a scowl. But you can't really tell because those dots kind of hide his face, hide his identity. So starting to work a little bit more conceptual then with, the, with that, that dot pattern. Um, and then this is a piece that I did for the Canton Museum of Art. They had a fundraiser. So um, I thought this one was cool because I did different images on the border. Um, this, is, this piece was supposed to be about vanity. So it's kind of a little bit dark. But a uh, um, bunch of skulls on the outside, and then mannequin hands around the edge, and then her with a mirror right here. So, so I thought it turned out pretty interesting. Um, turned out really heavy, though. It was about 15 pounds, because I used all this crazy wood. It was pretty big. Um, but then uh, I got another project. Um, I was commissioned by Dave Weaver at uh, Mastin Washington High School. I'm not sure if any of you guys are familiar with Dave Weaver. Um, he pays for a lot of that stuff that's at that, like, um, I think they call it, like, the, you know, Hall of Champions at the high school, where there's all the awards up on the wall. I mean, he commissions, like, all of that stuff. So for the longest time, he was trying to find somebody to do a painting, actually, um, up in this space right here. For the longest time, they had this paint, uh, Paul Brown uh, photo, um, but they wanted something painted there. And this is a training facility. Uh, so the facility goes out that way then. If you went back this way, that would be the cafeteria of the high school. Um, so this was cool too because I went to Washington High School. Um, so it was actually the first time I had been back in a very long time. So this was the image that we decided on using. Um, pretty iconic. I like the idea too that he was facing out this way. And if you think of the wall, the wall facing out that way was you know, the exit to the building. So I think formally it looked, looked good uh, with the space. So this is after I photoshopped everything. We decided to put like a tiger stripe background in that. Um, I put all the designs up on the wall and then piece by piece, we went through and painted this all out. Um, right now, what I'm doing is drawing his outline because then I painted that first uh, so that I'd actually be able to see a lot of that design work on that orange wall. Um, it showed up a lot better, obviously, um, on the white. So there again, and these are even smaller than the Joe Walsh uh, dots. So you can see how that starts to look then. See, and it's crazy, up close, you know, I'm working, sure when it's this tight I can kind of see, oh yeah, I'm working on the eye, but you really don't see any of that detail. I really kind of have to trust my initial design that I did on the computer where I'm actually figuring out what's here, what's there. Um, I kind of, when I'm in the field, you kind of just got to go with it. Um, and if there's a you know, one little, like let's say I made that dot the size of that dot. Then he'd have a freckle right there. <laughs> so needless to say, it's nerve wracking. And every time I'm doing these little dots, I'm thinking, oh gosh, this has to be this big. If I make this any bigger, I got to go back in with that white paint and make that a little bit smaller. So it's not just like going up to a wall and, you know, poking with a, you know, bingo thing or something. There I am up on the lift. What was cool is sometimes the hardest part about these murals, besides you know taking a 
bunch of time to paint them is finding the equipment. Um, they actually had their own lift at the high school, which was awesome, because they were like, oh, we have a lift in the closet. We'll bring it out for you. So we didn't have to work that out at all. It was great. Um, there you can see it a little bit further. Here's Fedora coming out. And once again, working very late at night. Um, surprisingly, with high school students, they're very loud. So uh, I tended to want to work at night when the security guards were there, where I kind of could just have peace and quiet. They were all friendly, but they were like, oh, you missed a spot. And, you know. <laughs> so here, here we are a little bit further. And you can see the hand-painted lettering, too. Like I said, I'm really having an interest in that. So just, you know, how that drop shadow works on top of that signature. And all the dots, then, you can see. That's just him behind that signature. It's part of his coat. It's part of where his coat ends. See, I can, I can start to look at these dots and see exactly what it is, even though they're pretty ambiguous. So there you go again. You can kind of see... What I tend to do is I like to outline all the dots that are going to be white and then kind of go back through. It's a little bit more calming to just take a brush and just kind of go right through all those little dots then. There's a comparison, my hand and how big the dots are. <laughs> so that really kind of gives you an idea. So, then, so this is once I drew it all out. You can real, real hard to tell, especially on the cinder block. Cinder block kind of hides those dots a lot. Um, but slowly then, just started painting all that out, getting real, real close then, and then that's it completed. So I think that this took part-time, showing up after work and weekends, probably about, probably about two months, maybe a little bit less than two months or so. Um, one thing, too, that I always make clear to whoever's commissioning on me on the projects, you know, if it works out for them, is obviously I do work full-time, uh, so I have assistants. I like to be there, though, uh, myself, um, so it does take a little bit longer than if I was just doing this. But I think the time involved and the, um, how precise I am and just the time and energy I, I give it, I think it's worth waiting a little bit more time. Um, I don't usually have anybody that approaches me and they say, oh, I have to have this done in two weeks. So, um, And then altar murals. I did... Um, the altar murals at uh, St. Mary's, uh, when Kuhn Restoration, after the fire, they restored the church. Um, so this was the design that uh, me and the father came up with, which was kind of like a mixture of a few different things. We definitely wanted something that was kind of in that grid pattern uh, that could live on both of those back walls, not the wall that's parallel to the front of the altar, but the ones that are kind of angled on the side. You'll see in a sec. See, this is how I have them laid out. This is when we had all the scaffolding up. Um, and man, it was crazy when that whole church was filled up with that scaffolding. Um, but they did an amazing job with all of that re restoration. Everything down to the light fixtures were polished. Like everything in that church was restored. Um, so then we're slowly drawing this out on the wall. And you can see that for me, this is an absolute vacation because I am not painting dots. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like smiling the whole time. And <laughs> so it's just solid lines. So I mean, I really could, I mean, it was more of, to me, like a sign painting thing than a, you know, a half-tone dot painting, but it was still fun more, uh, nonetheless. Um, the biggest hurdle in this was the paint itself. Um, they wanted to use this high metallic flake paint, which is very difficult to paint with. And it actually took about three or four coats so anything that you see that's painted in that gold behind those uh, altars has been painted about four times. There's my lovely wife, Sandy. <laughs> Here's us a little bit further. There's as they started to paint a little bit more up here. So Because I'm working in tandem. These guys are working up here as I'm painting. So we worked out our schedule, who's doing what, when. So you can really see the shine of that. It was super, super, you know, high metallic flake. So th this, um, they had to take the scaffolding down. I forget what, oh, they had to polish the floors. So then I had to use a ladder for the bottom. So I kind of rushed to be able to just have this to do so that I could actually reach it for a ladder. Because um, it took a really long time, but I have to say, and they aren't paying me at all, Kuhn Restoration busted their butt to try to get this done 
for Christmas for everybody. Um, so everything, even when it was months out, was like everything was methodically planned. And they were like, hey, man, we got to take this down today. So, you know, I, I definitely didn't want to be the person that was holding them up. Um, so there I am painting again. It was really fun, too, because uh, I was able to have the keys to St. Mary's. So I was like hanging out in the church after. <laughs> it's kind of creepy, but it was fun. It was cool. It was it was really awesome. Uh, so I, I believe that this is, yeah, these are the completed pictures then before they cleaned up the church. Um, and then there's the last picture that I took before I took off. So, yeah, and uh, if anyone's seen it now, you know, during service, just absolutely beautiful. I think they've done such a good job with it. Um, but really, really proud of that. Really proud of working with Coon Restoration. Uh, and actually, yeah, we did use all this gold paint. Is the exact same paint that they used up here. So uh, the father and the congregation very particular about the colors. So which I definitely appreciated. Um, so one of the um, later projects that I've uh, done, actually just finished this up last year, uh, was the uh, wastewater treatment department, um, the OB mural that was on an odor unit. I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with what an odor unit is. I wasn't either, so it's okay. Um, it's that thing. That actually pumps the water through it so it doesn't smell as bad. <laughs> so um, it was actually the first time that anyone told me that, hey, you're painting this, and it's, uh, this was a million dollars. So I was like, oh, wow, very expensive piece of equipment. Um, so this is the design that I came up with for them. It's an OB holding a pipe wrench with a little hat on, a little construction hat, um, wastewater treatment department. The department. Um, a lot of people think that it says, what would tigers do? But <laughs> I guess that kind of makes sense. <laughs> um, so here you can see the drawing that I'm doing on this. Um, here's me in the bucket lift that I got with the design. Putting the orange down, starting on the black, starting on the hand-painted letters. So this was a fun project, too. Um, and this is the treatment plant that's up by the Walmart for anybody that knows uh, that one's down over the hill. Um, there's my car. Luckily, too, once again, they had equipment that I could just use. Cuts down on my cost for them then, too. Um, here's when I'm getting close. Um, and it was really, really hot. This was last summer, so it was very hot. And if you know anything about you know that white, it's reflecting all of that uh, light right back in my face. And there's the completed with his hard hat on and everything. So that's completed, and then there's kind of a closer picture, easier to see. So really happy with that one, too. There's me celebrating. I was like, hooray, <laughs> can get out of the heat. And that's, like, actually from below. Now, the, the hard part about this is this shed sat right next to that unit. So that's why I had to use that lift truck. I couldn't use a ladder to actually get up there. So that was about the hardest thing about this project is just figuring out how to get around that unit uh, to be able to paint that. So there's the view from the road for the public access. So unfortunately, it's a little bit hard to see it um, from uh, the road. But I'm sure that if someone asked nice and you said you just wanted to see the mural, they might let you down there. Um, and then the last project that I've done and completed, um, actually for Paradigm Shift uh, um, Craft Brewery, I did their big logo on the inside of the... Um, the brewery that they have uh, in downtown Madison. I'm not sure if anybody's been down there, but it's awesome. Um, Mike's a great guy. It was great to work with him. Um, so this was more of the sign kind of painting end of it, um, but I really, really enjoy this. Um, and also, I'm working in a brewery, and I may have had beer while I was there. <laughs> so this was nice, too, indoor, indoor project. Um, you know, a little bit smaller scope, not as much overhead, easier to complete. So it's nice. I try to schedule myself so I'm doing these kind of things, and then I have a, something real big and something smaller, and, you know, just so I don't go cr absolutely nuts. Um, but, yeah, as you can see, this is, this is a little bit more simple than what I'm used to. So it's nice to have these projects inside, you know, in between projects that I'm doing that are a little bit more labor-intensive. Um, yeah, like I said, a little bit of beer. <laughs> and there's me and Mike after it was completed. Um, 
we uh, completed a couple weeks before his actual public opening, so we were happy with that. And um, you know, I, I uh, just really, really happy to work with a local business on something like this. Being born in Masson, and obviously uh, Masson Company, I have an interest in craft brew breweries and, and beer. So um, just really, really excited to be able to help a local business owner out. Anybody have any questions? Yes. I don't. I don't. My wife, yeah, my wife gives me a, you know, an earful about that. I'm, I'm going to start. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start. I don't know. I'm just, I don't know. The, the, if I see a mural and then I see somebody's name on it real big, I just, I don't know. I just, I like seeing the mural itself. I like seeing the visual imagery and that being what's important. Um, yes? Um, I didn't. I, uh, I was a screen printer, um, and I still am, so I was really interested in that halftone pattern, um, you know, like old newspaper printings or t-shirts when it's all in one color, just that little, I just, visually, I think that that's interesting. I know nowadays a lot of people use that in graphic design, um, but I think I'm just personally interested, and I just try to work out in my head how I can replicate that on a very, very large scale. Um, I would say impressionism, impressionism and like pointillism, that's more of just, um, there's a color. Right, there's a little bit more artist hand involved in that, isn't it? As much as I would argue all day long to, to anybody that my artist hand is in that because, you know, I drew every one of those dots a million times. But I think that you see like a little bit more fluid artist hand in that, um, where this is very geometric, very engineered. Um, but, um, and then the, the idea too that, you know, this is just all one tone. The only tones I'm giving with this are layers on top or below, um, but any of the half tone itself is always just one solid color. Yes, and I don't do it myself because that's a very sticky, like, it, it almost turns into like a glass. It's weird. Um, it's, uh, I specifically use Sherwin-Williams products um, and I always contract that out. Um, I have that in my contracts that I won't do any clear coating work because the fact that that's such a touchy thing, I'm not trained on it, and I always want someone that is specifically trained on how to use that product. So, um, It depends on the substrate more than anything. Um, they only can guarantee my paint and my clear coats I think it's at least 30 years probably. I mean, it's a good significant amount of time, but it never fails that what is the detriment to a mural is in fact not the product, especially if you, I go by crazy means to make sure that all the products that I use are the highest grade for out, outdoors. It's really gonna be your substrate and what's under it and any coatings that you have under a wall that you know might have been painted 100 years ago or you know 50 years ago, and you don't know what that product is. Getting that bonding is really what's important. So, yeah. Right. Right, and I'm actually right, and I'm actually really glad that you brought that up. Um, I actually wasn't aware that how those buildings were designed. That wall, her wall specifically, because if you think about. Paul Brown, and then you think about Lillian Gish, the two pump stations. You look at Paul Brown, it's perfect. Nothing wrong with it. Well, the reason Lillian Gish is completely different is because that wall behind her actually is made to leak water. It's holding water behind that. So if you actually go out to that pump station and you stand there, there's little drops of water leaking out of the wall. They actually made that to do that. And the city engineer was like, there's really nothing we can do. So I'm working with them because obviously it's my work. I want that to look good. But you cannot, you know, no matter what, if a wall leaks water, and you know this with a basement, if water leaks into a wall, you can paint anything on it. It's not going to last. Um, so we're going to try to work out possibly doing um, like a sheeting, like a cover over top, and then paint on that. Um, but believe me, that's been, you know, I drive past it every day. I don't like looking at that. But, uh, yeah, and it was one of my first projects. But at least I know the reason behind it, because um, those are the same paints Paul Brown has, same paints all these other things have that look perfect. So, but you, you, can't, you can't paint on a wet wall. 
so. Mm hmm I get it. Yes. Um, I carbon it onto the wall. So I'm drawing it again after I've drawn it in Photoshop. And I actually take it probably two foot by two foot, three foot by three foot sections, do a section at a time. So I've actually drawn it on the computer and then I draw it in real life and then paint it. So very labor intensive. Because um, anything with projecting, you're going to have a perspective. You know, you're never going to get that perfect. Plus, you know, I, I like the idea once again. It's almost a conceptual thing with labor and what's worth doing, you know, 100 hours of work on. But, oh, because I'll get people, they'll say, like, well, if you do it like this, it'll cut out so much of this work. And I was like, well, to me, it feels real doing it like this. So, I'm, for me, it's worth taking extra time and energy. So. Is there another question up there? Yes. I mean, yeah, I mean, I would love to. Actually, I know Mike is part of the Craft Brewers Association, and he's talked to other breweries, because um, I'm actually a really, really big fan of yeah, Royal Docks, uh, Great Lakes, actually. Um, I'd love to do something for Great Lakes as well, but yeah, I'm always open to that. Um, that would be awesome, actually. Yeah, well, cool. Awesome. Thank you so much, and uh, really appreciate your time. <laughs>I can tell from all your responses today that you know he's a great artist, and now we know he's a great speaker. Thank you all for coming.